Hello everyone. Getting uh, logged in here for Bible study. Hi Kevin. Hi Miss Janie. How are you? Hi Miss Sandy. Good to see you. Hey, one of y'all uh, let me know if uh, the volume is okay. Uh, <clears throat> put a comment down there. Let me know if you can hear me or not uh, before we get started. Hi Miss Tracy. Hi Brooke. Hi, Miss Leslie. How are you? Good to see you this evening. Yes. Y'all let me know if the volume is okay. Can you hear me? Uh, somebody uh, respond and let me know if you can hear me or not. Hi, Miss Audrey. All right, Kevin. Thank you so much. Appreciate that, buddy. Appreciate that. Good to see everybody this evening, man. It is uh, awesome to be with you. Uh, hi, Miss Ann Medley. How were you this evening? All right, good, good, good. Uh, so good to see you guys. Hope you had a good day today. Uh, hope that uh, <clears throat> everything is going fine this week. And uh, those of you going back to work, Miss Sandy, how is it? Uh, how is it being back at work? Hope everything's been going good with you. And uh, Kevin, make sure you tell uh, Miss Tessa that I said hello. <laughs> Uh, good to have you all with us tonight. We're going to be in uh, 1 John still. So if you got your Bibles, go ahead and get them out. We're going to give uh, other people just a couple minutes to, to get logged in and uh, to be here with us. Uh, flying solo tonight, just by myself. Usually I have uh, Leslie or Hannah here doing the video part for me, but... Uh, I'm by myself this evening. Hi, Miss Sue Broom. How are you? Hi, Miss Jeanette. Good to see you tonight. Tell your mama, Miss Jean, I said hello. Um, anyway, uh, flying solo. Leslie, y'all say a little prayer for Leslie. She's uh, having a real bad flare today. Real bad flare. And uh, Hannah's been uh, working uh, some overtime. So, uh, <clears throat> say a little prayer for them and we'll miss them so it's just uh it's just you guys and me tonight which is okay that'll be all right that'll be all right i'm uh i gotta try to hi miss robbie how are you tell harvey i said hello so i'm gonna try to handle the uh the uh, technology part along with the uh, teaching part but i think it's gonna be okay i think it's gonna be okay if you can hear me i think we're gonna be all right uh yeah, get your Bibles out. Uh, go ahead and turn to 1 John, and we'll give everybody a, uh, a a chance to get logged in. We'll just wait just a couple more couple more minutes here, just another minute or so, and give people an, an opportunity to get logged in. Good to see that Gene and Jeanette is both watching. Thank you so much. Uh, miss you guys. Hope you all are having a good week. Uh, hope you all are having a good week. Uh, yes. Well, tell Carl I said hi. Tell Carl I said hi. Uh, that's a, that's a little joke. Uh, his name's Steve, and there for a while I was calling him Carl. I have no idea why, but I just did. I knew better, but, uh, y'all know me. I get, uh, absent-minded sometimes, and that's okay. Hi, Miss Jan. Good to see Jan Holcomb watching with us this evening. Hi, Miss Bonnie. Good to see you watching this evening. Uh, Miss Jan, make sure you tell uh, Bob I said hello and that I miss him, miss both of you guys. Miss Bonnie, make sure you say hi to Marshall for me. Uh, uh, missing you guys. Uh, Emily Kate is watching. Hi, Miss Emily. Hope you and the girls are doing all right and uh, Sean's doing all right. Make sure you tell everybody that Pastor Tommy said hello and uh, good to see you guys this evening. Uh, got a good Bible study for us tonight. Uh, get you something to drink, get comfortable, and uh, find you a uh, find you a nice, comfortable spot. Get your Bibles out. And uh, hi, Miss Leslie. Goes my beautiful wife. She's watching with us tonight. Uh, Debbie Harner's watching tonight. Hi, Miss Debbie. Good to see you. Tell Keith I said hello. Uh, Hi, Miss Pat. Good to see you. I just spoke with Miss Pat on the phone, so uh, 
she better be on here watching Bible study. So good to see Miss Pat. You know, uh, funny story about Miss Pat and Miss Janie is uh, every time I go visit them, it's funny. I get uh, I get so comfortable in their house and uh, less uh, less less. They've got a, a they've got like a den and they've got this couch and I don't know what it is about this couch, but. I'll go in there and I'll visit with them and we're talking and we're having a good time and uh and I'll I'll be sitting there on uh on that couch and I'll get so comfortable. Next thing I know I'm asleep. And they just laugh at me and they just let me sleep. They'll just let me sleep. And then I'll sort of wake back up a little bit and they'll be staring at me and so that just says how how comforting it is to be in their presence. So Love Miss Janie and Miss Pat so much. Miss Debbie, love you too. So good, uh, so good to see you this evening. Yeah, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and get your Bibles out. First John chapter chapter two. We left off on this verse uh, a couple weeks ago. We didn't get to have Bible study last week because uh, got interrupted with an emergency at the parsonage. We had a uh, we had a shower that started to leak, and a uh, serviceman was there longer than what I expected. So I do apologize for about missing last week, but uh, looking forward to getting back and into us. It's very timely, though. What we're doing tonight is very timely. Everything that we've been doing these past few weeks has just been so timely and so needed. And uh, what we're looking at tonight is going to build off of what we've been talking about, uh, especially on Sunday. Uh, with the Holy Spirit and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives and the importance of the Holy Spirit in our lives and, and how that uh, we really need uh, the, a movement of the Holy Spirit right now, not just in our lives, but in the church and in our world and our nation. I tell you what, it just seems like our, our world is just falling apart. It's just uh, breaking my heart. It is so sad so sad the things that are going on and uh the uh just the the hatred that is being spewed at one another and the evil that's being uh done all across our nation and the things that are happening it just grieves the spirit on the inside of me and uh you know i just uh i've struggled with it all week i i asked you on sunday to uh set aside some time this week for fasting, you know, whether it be a meal or whether it be uh, uh, some TV time or internet time or just set aside some time for fasting and praying and, and just pray to push back against the darkness. I want to encourage you to, to continue doing that. Pray and push back against the darkness. There is a spiritual wickedness that is working right now in our nation and a spiritual darkness that is coming against uh, everyone, uh, uh, people of all walks of life, people of all color, people of all, uh, uh, everybody. It, it, it is showing no, uh, no favoritism toward anybody. And this darkness is just trying to sweep through our country right now. And we, the people of God, we've got to fight against this. We, we have to push back against this, this darkness. And we have to just pray that God will just intervene and come and put put an end to this and claim victory over this stuff in the sweet name of Jesus. And we need to plead the blood over the things that are happening right now. And, uh, you know, uh, we're going to talk about that as we get into this. So, yeah, it, let's get started with a word of prayer. And uh, let's just ask God to <clears throat> be with us in a very powerful way. And that the Holy Spirit will be at work right now. And let's give the Holy Spirit liberty. Let's let the Holy Spirit speak to us and take God's word and make it uh, just just jump off the pages at us. And that they, we will see things that we might not have uh, seen before. And uh, that we'll understand things clearly and simply. You know me, that's all I've ever tried to do is just preach simple, simple Simple and understanding. I think that God's word is written in such a way that he wants us to be able to understand it. I think that, that God is speaking to us in such a way that, that he, want us to be, he wants us to be knowledgeable. And he wants us to hear him and to understand him. So uh, <clears throat> let's do that right now. Let's all go, uh, go before the throne of grace as we pray. Father, 
I thank you so much for this very special time that we have together here this evening. Father, as we get into your word, I ask you, Lord, that the sweet Holy Spirit will just have liberty. Father, may you just speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. Lord, may you bring about conviction where conviction is needed. Lord, bring about correction where correction is needed. But Father, most of all, God, please, we beg in you for you to bring about comfort, comfort and some peace. Father, for all these things that we are witnessing and seeing firsthand, Father, for the, all the worry and the anxiety that everybody is suffering over the condition of our nation, Father, for all these individuals, Father, that are wrapped up in what's going on with the riots, go out, God, I just pray in Jesus' name that you'll sweep in, and Father, that uh, they'll push back the darkness, Father, that you'll take away the evil spirits of hatred. Father, that you'll take away the evil spirits of division. Father, that you'll drive away the evil spirits of prejudice. Father, that you'll drive away the evil spirits of death and destruction. <clears throat> Father, I claim in Jesus' name, Father, that, that we can come together and that we can be one. Father, that we can be what you truly envisioned us to be. And Father, that we can have one voice. Father, one voice to where we can see true, legitimate change in our country for the better. Father, that draws us closer to you. God, just help us in this way. Father, have mercy in this way. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. Uh, 1 John chapter 2. Now, I encourage you always, get out a pen, get out a piece of paper. We're going to be looking at uh, some scriptures tonight. And uh, those of you who've done extensive Bible studies with me know that I'm a, first, I'm a firm believer in 2 Timothy 2.15 that, uh, that, uh, that tells us to study and to show ourselves approved. A workman that, uh, that needs not to be ashamed and uh, that, that we do this before God, accepted of God. And the way we do this is by rightly dividing the word of God. I think that the word of God will answer and speak for itself. And I think that we are to, to take and study the whole word, not just bits and pieces, not just what we have, have picked and selected. We, we have taken the whole word and we study it in, in its entirety. So we're going to do some, some scripture back and forth because I really want us to get a good understanding of, of uh, the role of the Holy Spirit and the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is real. It, it's a it's a person of the Godhead. You know, we, we believe in a triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. All of them are equal and import, equally important in their own right, in, in our relationship, in how we interact with God. And that Holy Spirit is, is the peace of God, the part of God that is with us, right? Just literally in reality with us, inside of us. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. And, and, and he, he is the one, right, that, that, that comforts us, that brings us that peace, that goes beyond understanding, that gives us words of knowledge, that, uh, that empowers us with spiritual gifts, with spiritual wisdom, spiritual discernment. Those things are so needed right now because there's so much chaos in this world and there's so much hurt and there's so much suffering. And, and, and I've shared this with you before. I just want to talk about the hurt and the suffering that has taken place. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When something is of God, it brings about healing and transformation, and it brings about a closer relationship with God and the things that is happening in this world. Let me tell you what happened to this gentleman, George Floyd, the other day. And it's just, you know, I've thought about this and I've thought about this, and I, I promise I'm not going to get on a stump right now. I'm not going to get on a stump. But I just want to address this with you so we can have a better understanding of what we're fixing to, to learn about through the Holy Spirit. Is that what happened to this man, George Floyd? 
was we we got to witness this on TV. We literally got to watch a man lose his life senselessly with no compassion, with no empathy. And what happened to that man was an act of evil. It was just evil. I mean, that was just a disregard for a complete sanctity of life, a disregard for humanity. That was just a disregard. That man was mur murdered right in front of our eyes. Now, I don't care if he was guilty of all the sins in the world. He was handcuffed. He was subdued. He was on the ground. And his life was viciously, mercilessly taken away from him. And it was wrong. It was wrong beyond all measure. And these gentlemen need to be held accountable for their actions. They need to be held accountable for their actions. And, and if these are practices of, of that police force there in Minneapolis, there need to be there needs to be some change in leadership. The police chief needs to be changed. The mayor needs to be changed. Even the governor needs to be changed if it goes that high. I mean, whatever the, the environment or the system is that would allow something like this to happen, there needs to be change. But let me say this. Listen, an outcry and protest and writing letters and talking to your leaders and, and showing remorse and showing healing and showing compassion and doing prayer walks and walks, I mean, to, to honor this man <clears throat> and to lift up our voices uh, against the leaders of our nation, to let them know that we see this and that it's wrong. I, I am 100% for that, 100%. But these riots have taken an evil turn. They've taken an evil turn. They, innocent people are dying now for the cause of riots and protest. Lives, lives of these already uh, uh, individuals that live in these impoverished situations in these cities Lives are being turned upside down and destroyed. Businesses, locally owned businesses are being destroyed. Children have died. Fires are being set. Property is being destroyed. That's not of God. That's not of God. And we need to pray. We need to pray really hard for the Holy Spirit to work and to move in this situation and 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 to take away this hatred and to take away this 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 hurt that is that is going on and i really feel like the devil is trying to capitalize on what happened to this sweet man george floyd and turn it into something even worse remember the devil operates this way he operates out of fear and he operates to kill steal and destroy that's the devil's work that's the devil's work. And as we get further on to 1 John, in 1 John chapter 5, it says that Jesus was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. To where the devil destroys, Jesus builds up. To, the, to where the devil hurts, Jesus brings healing. To where the devil kills, Jesus brings life. Jesus brings us together. And that's what we need to be praying for right now. We need to be praying like we've never prayed before for our nation and our communities and for these individuals that have already suffered loss of life and their families and loss of property, and we need to pray that this will come to an end. We need to pray it'll come to an end. Now, I've been on my stump. I've been on my stump. But I just want to tell you I love you and I appreciate you so much agreeing with me in prayer for that and begging God for the sweet Holy Spirit to work that way. Tonight, I want you, if you will, I want us to, first of all, I want us to look at 1 John chapter 2. We're going to look at two verses very quick. Verse number 26 and 27. Now, I'm reading this out of the New Living Bible. The New Living Bible, verses 26 and 27. 
John says this, I'm writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead you astray. And there's a lot out there right now that could really take us away and bring us into a, dece into a deceived state, into a dark state. He says, but verse 27, he said, but you have received the Holy Spirit. God has not left us alone. He has given us his spirit. We learned about that on Sunday of uh, for Pentecost Sunday, how that the Holy Spirit has come, the church was born, and now he lives inside of us. He says, and but you have received the Holy Spirit and he lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. The Holy Spirit inside of us the Holy Spirit inside of us shows us what is true. He teaches us what is true. We know the difference between right and wrong. We know the difference between good and evil. We know the difference between love and hate. We know these things because the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. He's with us and he's working on us and tugging on our hearts and pulling us toward God. John says, you have that in you, for the Spirit teaches you everything that you need to know, and what he teaches is true. It is not a lie. So just as he has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. Now, I want us, if you will, to turn over to chapter 4, and uh, John talks about it in chapter 4 a little bit as well. I want to read two verses here in 1 John chapter 4 concerning about our relationship and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Verse 4 of John chapter 4. John says, But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the Spirit who lives in you is greater than the Spirit who lives in this world. Now, I want to tell you something right now, church. The church is not defeated. Everybody thinks that the church is closed right now. The church is not closed. You know what we're doing right now? Interacting with one another, reading God's Word together, agreeing in prayer together. That is the church. The church is alive. It's alive because we're alive. We don't need these four walls to define us. We're not captive to these four walls. We're not just the church when we're in a brick and mortar building. We're the church because we are unified together in spirit and in prayer and in wisdom and in faith. And we work together and we care for one another. That's what makes us the church. That's what makes us the church. And don't you ever believe the lie that the church is closed, that the church is defeated, that the church has no voice, that the church has no power, because that is a lie straight out of hell. The church is alive, and it's more alive today than it ever has been, and God is calling his children to step up, to step up and to speak out and to proclaim and to lift up the word of God and to lift up the name of Jesus and to hold and to hold on to our faith and to believe in him and to push back against this evil that is happening in this world. So don't you dare buy into this because the spirit is in us and we already have the victory. That's what he says. He says, because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in this world. Don't give in to the to what's happening in this world. The things that are going on are horrible. And if we sit there, we can let it pull us right into the darkness with everybody else. We cannot do that. We have to push back against that darkness. We have to bring hope where all hope seems to be lost. We have to bring Jesus and healing to, to people and places that, that needs to be healed and needs to be transformed and renewed. We need to be that voice. So look, still chapter 4, look at verse 13. He says this, And God has given us his spirit as proof. As proof, you know, so many times I hear people talking about how can you have blind faith? Our faith isn't blind. Our faith is based off of relationship that is real. And that relationship is, is real because of the Holy Spirit that lives in us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. 
Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that I can know, that I know that you are with me and a part of my life through your sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you. Hey, if there's nothing more than we get out of tonight's message or lesson is that we understand that the Holy Spirit is with us and God has not forsaken us. And no matter how much ugliness and how much hurt is going on in this world and no matter how loud and how destructive that the devil tries to be, we are already conquerors. We are already victorious and that God walks with us and in us and that we have his spirit and that we have the authority in Jesus. Jesus name to tell Satan and all the demons of hell to get back and to stay back and we bring the light of the gospel of Christ into a dark world and we push that darkness away we push it away through love we push it away through forgiveness we push it away through healing we push it through away through through unity and being together I'm preaching this Bible study but y'all got me preaching Y'all got me preaching. Let's get into it a little bit deeper about the Holy Spirit. Let's talk about what uh, John just said there, that he, that he God gave us proof that we have a relationship with him because of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. Let me read, write these verses down, but let me read them to you as you're writing them down. And, and when you get through and you spend time in devotions, I always encourage everybody to do this. Take the verses and the, and the things that we've talked about if you're taking notes. Go back and get your Bible and pray and say, God, as I read your word, give me understanding, give me discernment, and read these verses for yourself and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Because listen, listen, John already told us, the Holy Spirit teaches you all things. I'm just a spiritual leader. I'm just, I'm just a person who helps to guide. But God's the one that gives you knowledge. God is the one that gives you understanding. And he does that through the Holy Spirit. So he gave us this proof. This proof. I want to read you a passage out of Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And we're going to start reading in verse number 12. Now here I'm reading out of the King James Version. Here I'm reading out of the King James Version. He says in verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. Now, John, uh, I mean, uh, Paul is saying here in Ephesians, you heard the gospel, you believe, you believe this truth, this truth is the gospel, and this is, this is your trust. This is what you're putting your trust in. Now, Paul goes on to talk to us. In whom also, after you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Let me say that again. After you believed, after that you answered the faith calling in your heart and said yes to God and yes to Jesus, that God sealed us. Okay, we talk about the Holy Spirit being in us. The Holy Spirit seals us, makes us whole, completes us, makes us, makes us complete and, and perfect, if you will, or whole uh, in the eyes of God. See, God created uh, human beings in his image. God is three parts, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Man and women are three parts. We are body, soul, and spirit. The only thing, only thing that, that we need to make us whole is our body. Our body is our, is our physical consciousness. That what, that's what we get to experience the world with. That's what we get to experience this beautiful creation. We have five senses that God gave us through, to, to experience through our body this wonderful creation. We can see it, all the beautiful colors, all the beautiful things. We can smell it. We can smell all the beautiful flowers, all the wonderful fragrances, even the ugly ones. Even the ugly ones. Those of you who's been around a skunk, hey, that's still a creation of God. 
God gave us that sense of smell so we could experience that. Hearing. We get to hear all, we get to hear the birds sing. We get to hear the frogs croak. We get to hear the, 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 the rain fall. The rivers rush. We get to hear each other. Oh my goodness. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And he, God gave us tastes. Oh, he put so many beautiful things here on this world, in this world, and he sanctified them. And, 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 and food is such a symbolic, uh, 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 used in such a symbolic way to signify a closeness and a bond and relationship. And he gave us taste so that we could taste that, that, that God is good and we could taste that this world is good. But he also gave us touch. Touch. We could touch things. We could pick up that flower we're smelling. We could pet that puppy dog. We, we could hold our loved ones. We could touch things. And he gave us this because we have been given a body. He gave us a soul. Our soul is who we are. It's our identity. My soul is signified. That's, that's me. That's Tommy Messer. Your soul is you. That's who you are. That's your identity. And he gave us a seat of emotions so that we can experience what it means to be human. We laugh and we have, we experience joy. We cry and we experience hurt. We, we understand worry and anxiety. We understand depression. We also understand elation. We understand these things because of the emotions that God allows us to have. God has emotions. He let us have emotions. And that's why we, we can know we're human. And when we lose the emotions of love and empathy and compassion, we've lost our humanity. Did you hear what I just said? When we lose the emotions of love, empathy, and compassion, We've lost a part of our humanity. That's, that's what makes us who we are. That's what makes us connected. That's what makes us human. And God gave us that. But he also gave us a spirit. Now, this is where that we need some understanding. When we were born in this world of natural birth, we were born incomplete. We were born with a body and a soul, but our spirit was spiritually dead. And I'm going to explain to you. When we come into a faith relationship with God, that whole, I'm not talking about the human spirit. I'm not talking about that, that human spirit that's attached to our soul. I'm talking about that spirit that completes us, which is the, the spirit of God that connects us with God. I'm talking about that spirit, just like the body allows us to experience the world in our in our uh, our soul, in our emotions, gets to, lets us to experience humanity. God gave us a spirit, uh, a spirit, so we can experience Him. We can experience Him, and that spirit comes alive. It's awakened. It's turned on. When we come into our faith relationship with him and it is sealed, which means it is permanently put into place. It is made whole. We are made whole by the presence of God's spirit in our lives. So verse 13, back to Ephesians 1, it says, is that you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14 which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, until the praise of his glory. Let's talk about that. In verse 13, he was called the spirit of promise. Verse 14, Paul says, this is the earnest of our inheritance. I remember when me and my wife, we bought a house. For the first time, we never bought a house before. And the uh, realtor said, how much earnest money are you willing to put down? I said, what in the world is earnest money? I knew I got to put down a deposit. I didn't know nothing about no earnest money. What is that? Why, why, you got to explain that to me. 
And she, she explained it to me and said, the earnest money is a promise that you're going to follow through with your commitment that you're making to the buyers to purchase their house. And it is non-refundable. This is a promise. And the more you give, the greater the, uh, uh, the, the brevity of your promise that you're making to them. I said, wow, wow, that's, that's powerful. And so when I read this verse, and I see that God gave us his spirit as an earnest of his promise, how much greater, how much more brevity could you ask for than for God to give us a piece of himself as a promise that he is going to fulfill everything he's told us to do, that he told us that he was going to do, <clears throat> that he's going to walk with us and take care of us until the day of our redemption. Did you get that out of that verse? Until the day of redemption. So we can take solace in understanding that God has made a promise and we know that God cannot lie. God cannot lie. And he's made us a promise, and he sealed it with the Holy Spirit. That's why the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives is so important to us. Because when the Holy Spirit is working on us and talking to us and leading us and guiding us, that's the very hand of God working in our lives. That is the proof that our relationship with him is real. Oh, how powerful is that? How powerful is that? Let me continue. I might go a little bit over tonight, but that's what we, we need to get this out. We need to get this out. Now, Paul also said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he said in verse 13, for by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free and have been all to made to drink into one spirit. The church is a compilation of, of all races, kindreds, and nations brought together in a kindred spirit, which is the Holy Spirit of God. And I don't, I'm sure that you've experienced this, but have you ever just been around somebody and then just, this is after communicating with them and being around them or maybe seeing their efforts or their deeds, you just go, man, they've got the same spirit I have. There's this bearing witness there because that's your brother or sister in Christ. We're all made into one. You see how God brings together? The devil wants to divide. God brings together. How powerful is that? How powerful is that? Let me keep on. Jesus said this about the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14, verse 16 through 18, he says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Comforter. Not something somebody that's going to bring hurt. Not something that's going to bring destruction. Not something that's going to bring pain. Not something that's going to bring tears. But a comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he dwells in you and shall be in you. Oh, he says it again. John said it again in, in the gospel, just like he said in his epistle. He is in you, and we know God. We know our relationship with him is real. Jesus says in verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will come to you. Jesus promised this. He promises. Y'all want to know what I was looking at? Miss Jackie was knocking on the door and she about scared my spirit out of me. Somebody say amen right there. All right, just a couple more and I'm going to close. Just a couple more and I'm going to close. In John 16, I want to read a couple passages out of John 16. And now, now I've shared with you, if you have questions about some of this, uh, feel free to either comment your question or send me a private message, send me an email, send me a text, give me a call, and we'll talk it out, and I'll do my very best to answer this. But I want to talk to you about the work of the Holy Spirit. 
And this is what that I've been encouraging us to pray for. In John 16, starting in verse 7, Jesus said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgments. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world, talking about Satan, is already judged. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Listen, as we're praying and we're pushing back against the darkness, we have to realize that it's not our power. It's not the power of our words. It's not the power of our spirit, but it's the power of the faith that is in all of us in allowing and releasing the Holy Spirit to do what he has sent here to do, and that's to reprove the world of sin, to reprove the world of righteousness, and to reprove the world of judgments. That's what our prayers will do. That's what brings an end to the hates. That's what brings an end to this destruction. That's what brings an end to prejudice. That's what brings an end to division. That's what brings an end to the hurt that is happening in this world. It's for the church of the living God to rise up and to pray and to push back against the darkness and to release the Holy Spirit of God in the authority and the name of Jesus Christ to go and to do what he was sent here to do. We are the vessels of the Holy Spirit. It's just like a lamp. You cannot turn on, you cannot have lights in a dark place until the lamp brings the light in there. And we will not have light in a dark world until we, the vessels, the lamp, brings that light into this dark world. Are you hearing what I'm telling you, church? Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I'm going to read you one more and I'm going to close. John 16, that same passage, John 16, down to verses 13 and 14. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. Jesus said, he shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine and she'll show it unto you. Let's use our discerner for just a little bit, okay? Let me close on this. Let's use our discerner. When the Holy Spirit is working and the name of Jesus is stamping out the works of the devil and reclaiming victory in this world, it's going to be done in the name of Jesus. It's not going to be done to glorify an individual. It's not going to be done to glorify a government official. It's not going to be done to glorify a pastor or a bishop or an elder or whatever people call themselves. It's going to be done to glorify Jesus Christ. And he uses us, his vessels. The pastors, the elders, the bishops, the apostles, the prophets, the missionaries, the people, the teachers, the people on the pew, the laity, we are all just vessels. And we bring a light that brings about an illumination that shows only one person, and that's Jesus Christ. That's Jesus Christ. For his glory and for his honor. That's what this is all about. Listen, I know it seems like we're taking a little while to get through this, but that's okay. 
I told you when we started here in 1 John, I really didn't know how fast it was going to go. And then everything started happening, and, and all this stuff is just sort of timely and just needed right now. And so we spent this whole this whole evening study on just this one, one topic of the Holy Spirit. That's okay. As long as we get it out and, and we dig deep and learn and we understand it, that's what it's all about. So we've got about four more passages that we're going to look at in 1 John as we try to finish out uh, this, this five-chapter book, this very powerful epistle. And I told you it was going to challenge you. I told you it was going to challenge you. It, it's, it's challenging. It's convicting. Church, that's what we need right now. We need God to challenge us and to convict us more than ever before. Listen, it is my prayer that this has been a blessing to you. I will see you again on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock for church. We'll be back together next Thursday to continue our, our, our walk through 1 John. Thank you for being here and watching and being a part of this. I want you to know I love you. I consider it a privilege that God has allowed me to be a part of your lives. I'm just one of you. I may be called your pastor and I may be your shepherd, but I'm still just one of you. We are all on this journey together. I love you. I hope you have a blessed evening. And it's my prayer that the Lord will be with us. In Jesus' name, amen.